Hey guys, okay, so in this video, I'll be continuing my summaries on Seneca's letters. And today we'll be looking at letter 101, which is titled, On the Futility of Planning Ahead. And if you want to check out this letter, I have a link in the description, which goes to Wikipedia. And actually, if you, if you want to find all his letters, you can go to Wikipedia and get all of them there. But so basically, what Seneca is talking about in this letter is that Planning for the future all of the time is very unnecessary because you pretty much have no idea what you're going to be doing or what's going to happen to you in the future. You know, like most people's plans don't usually go exactly as they saw it in their head. But anyway, let's get to the actual letter itself. So at the beginning of the letter, Seneca speaks of the story of Cornelius Senecio, who is a Roman knight who was originally born in a lower class family. But as time passed, he grew up, and he slowly was able to accumulate a pretty good sum of money and wealth. And he was able to, you know, make a good living for himself. Um, and so, as you can see, Senecio was a pretty successful person who has achieved some pretty good things. And actually, he was a all-around pretty good guy. Like, he cared for his health. He was a great friend to others. Like, there's a story of him visiting a friend and where he basically stayed the entire day and night by his friend's bedside to care for him because he was like really sick and so as you can see um Senecio was just a good dude who cared for the people around him was very healthy and made a good life for himself even, th even though he came from a poor family originally but unfortunately and i'll quote seneca's letter here so within a few hours after the time when he had been performing all the duties of a sound and healthy man he passed away, he who was venturing investments by land and sea, who had also entered public life and left no type of business untried, during the very realization of financial success, and during the very onrush of the money that flowed into his coffers, was snatched from the world. And so right here, Seneca shows that Senecio, after eating a comfortable dinner, had his throat suddenly get a severe infection. And this infection closed up his breathing pathway so that he couldn't breathe and after just a few minutes he actually died. Um, so this is a very tragic story of a good man who probably had a very good life ahead of him, but having it all end right there and even without warning. He was a, he was a healthy guy, but even after all of those precautions, death still manages to sneak up behind him and take him by surprise. Like this guy was a person who has done a lot and accomplished so much and probably had many plans later in his life, but it all ended with a simple throat infection. And I think what Seneca is trying to show here is that even if you plan, even if you prepare, and even if you are cautious, it doesn't matter who you are or what you have done. Terrible and tragic things can still happen to you and the people around you. The basic message here kind of relates to this old Jewish saying, um, man plans and God laughs. I think another idea that Seneca is trying to convey here is that the future is just super uncertain. You have to remember that you really have no idea what's going to happen to you in the future. You can't even tell me what's going to happen to you in the next five minutes with 100% absolute certainty. So how can you be certain about your long-term plans for the future? And so, you know, that all kind of connects with the idea of not worrying about the future. like. You know, why should you worry, fear, or have any anxiety for the future if you're not even certain of it? Why fear something that may not even exist? Sure, you should definitely prepare for things, but don't destroy your present experiences through the constant worrying and fearing of an event in the future. Alright, so in the next paragraph, Seneca writes, But how foolish it is to set out one's life when one is not even the owner of the morrow. Oh, what madness it is to plot out such far-reaching hopes. So basically, what Seneca is saying here is that planning for the future is a very difficult thing to do, especially when you're trying to plan like specific things for the far future. You really have no idea what you're going to be doing or learning or who you're even going to be one year from now. People can easily become different, completely different, over the course of a single year. You know, like, <coughs> I personally have seen massive changes in my own life in just a handful of years. I would barely even recognize my own thoughts or beliefs. Um, 
But, you know, if we go back to what Seneca is saying when he says, when one is not even the owner of the morrow, what he's saying and what he's trying to tell you is that how can you plan ahead years from now if you don't even know the specific things that you'll do tomorrow? Like, I can look back at Senecio's story where he literally dies from an infection out of nowhere. Like, no one ever even expected that to happen, but it did. If you think about it, the same could happen to you. You could be dead in a few hours and you wouldn't even know. You could be dead in the next 10 minutes and you still would have no idea if that would happen or not. And so I think the bigger message here is that Seneca is trying to say is that worrying for the future is absolutely pointless. Like stop worrying about the scary and painful events that you will face. Those things will happen, but they aren't happening right now. So you don't have to worry. If you're going to suffer in the future, then you're going to suffer. There's not much you can do to change that. So by that reasoning, like, what can you accomplish by worrying and being anxious for a future event? If there's not much you can do, then just trust in yourself that whatever lies ahead, you'll get through the pain. Just calm down. Because if there's nothing you can do now, it's best to just enjoy and live the present to have fun while you have it. Knowing that such an event is coming could actually be a good thing because it encourages us to live right now because eventually we're going to have to face the pain. This sounds kind of like the idea of using death to your advantage. If we put death in the place of the terrible event that you're afraid of, you can use it to spur you into action. Like, I don't agree 100% with Seneca here. I think that at the very least, use the fear of death to your advantage. Planning out what you want to accomplish and do in your life before you die is an excellent way to see where you want to set your priorities in life. And actually, Seneca writes about death in his letter. He says, There is indeed a limit fixed for us, just where the remorseless law of fate has fixed it, but none of us know how near he is to this limit. Therefore, let us so order our minds as if we had come to the very end. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's account every day. Like, do you want to be successful and achieve many things in your life? Or do you just want to leave the earth not really doing anything significant for yourself or for other people? Do you want to actually do something? Or do you want to just sit around and play video games or watch Netflix all day and waste your time? And using the idea of death, you can remind yourself that of what you actually want to do in life. And you can get a boost in motivation by remembering that you will one day die. For example, I just want you to think for a second that you have cancer and that you're going to die in like six months. You have exactly six months to live and after that, everything in your life disappears. You leave the earth and your life is over. I want you to really think about what you're going to be doing during those six months. So in the quote when Seneca says, let us postpone nothing, this is exactly what he's trying to say. You know, what are your priorities? What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to learn the, learn the guitar? Start a business? Write a book? Do you want to spend more time with your close friends and family? Start living more? What's the thing that you've been putting off because you were too busy or too lazy to do? But anyway, let's get back to the topic of planning for the future and whether you should do it or not. So later in the letter, uh, Seneca writes, There is nothing more wretched than worry over the outcome of future events. How then shall we avoid this vacillation? In one way only. If there be no reaching forward in our life, if it is withdrawn into itself. For he is only anxious about the future, to whom the present is unprofitable. Okay, so the main message here is that Worrying for results of future events is a terrible thing to do in that the reason that people worry about future events is because their present isn't good enough. Let's say, for example, if you were bored and had nothing to do, the chances of your mind wandering towards future events is very high. If you're unsatisfied in the present moment and you're detached from what you're doing right now, then you might be worrying over future events and building anxieties and fears on things that haven't even happened yet. So to solve this problem, Seneca believes that we should focus on making our present better. By making our present more satisfying, enjoyable, or fulfilling, the present starts to become much more worthy of our attention and as a result, you'll worry a lot less about the future and live more in present moments. 
All right, so finally, I just want to take a look at this one last quote in the, sen in the letter, where Seneca says, Therefore, my dear Lucilius, begin at once to live, and count each separate day as a separate life. So, with this quote, I think Seneca really wraps up the entire idea of living in the present and not worrying about the future. He says to begin at once to live. He commands you to live right now to have great and memorable experiences right now, in the present moment. Don't think about the future or even the past for that matter, because none of these things really affect you unless you let them. In the end, don't let a troubled past plague your thoughts and don't let an uncertain future take away from your present.